And now our live coverage from the National Book Festival continues. Up next, a presentation by Nina Khrushcheva, granddaughter of Nikita Khrushchev. Her book, The Lost Khrushchev, A Journey into the Gulag of the Russian Mind. She's being introduced by Peter Rudick of the Library of Congress. The person fights accu wrong accusation of government propaganda and then into a case study of Russian political process. This personal story is tied with national collective historic experience. Author of this book, Dr. Nina Khrushcheva, is professor of international affairs at the New School in New York and a senior fellow at the World Policy Institute. As most of good social scientists, she is a good writer. Her syndicated articles appear regularly in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Newsweek, and many other publications. Her blog posts published on the CNN website are the source of authoritative information on current political developments in Russia. Fortunately, or rather unfortunately, because the war going on in Ukraine now, the publication of this book turned to be timely. Because of this conflict, we are witnessing how millions of people fall victims of government propaganda, how Russian government justifies its action in Ukraine by blaming Nina's great-grandfather for creating problems it attempts to resolve now, and how a typical Russian phenomenon when people tend to believe the state more than they believe themselves is being revitalized. This book explains why all that happens and guides readers through Russian people's minds, which are still not free from a kind of invisible internal mental prison, as our author says. So please enjoy conversation with Nina Khrushcheva. Thank you very much. Uh, the introduction is certainly very much better and much more than I deserve, but thank you. Thank you all of you for being here. It's an incredible honor. I was talking to somebody today and I said, "For I don't feel like a writer at all, ever. Um, I write trifles, I write small articles about why Arnold Schwarzenegger should become American ambassador to uh, to Russia today, so uh, the fact that I'm treated seriously here, it's a great, great honor. I hope I will not disappoint you entirely. Um, I want to start from saying right away that when I speak, when I wrote my book and I speak today, I do not speak of be on behalf of the Khrushchev family. I do not speak on behalf of any specific Russian group. Um, I am not channeling Nikita Khrushchev in any way possible. Uh, and uh, uh, this is very important because recently some members of my family said that I, because I'm critical of Putin, I participate in the anti-Russian campaign uh, unleashed by the West. I don't feel this way uh, in America, and I actually thought in Russia too, until very recently. Uh, we're in a free country, so we can agree to disagree. But apparently we can't. Um, and that's the subject of my book. It's the gulag of the mind. And the gulag of the Russian mind is that the state is more important than any individual. It, unfortunately, it goes um, until today. And uh, the point that I'm making is that uh, we don't need barbed wire to keep us in check. To keep, keep, to keep us in check. We'll build it all on our own. And that actually explains um, uh, Vladimir Putin's support of 80% of the population really feels that he's doing the right thing in Ukraine. Um, that's the gulag of the mind. I would like to write, to read a few lines from the beginning of my book. I actually, the reason I do is because I myself am very fascinated that it happened to me. So I guess if I read it out loud, I may believe it better because I still cannot believe it. So just bear with me for a couple of minutes here. Um, and I'm reading from uh, Prelude, which is called Prelude All in the Name. This is Nina, Yulia's oldest daughter. I was introduced to an old, balding man with glasses. 
the man greeted me with silence, holding his gaze. Leonid's granddaughter, he said. The KGB recently uncovered a versia, an account, saying your grandfather was a Nazi traitor. I cringed. A Nazi traitor? At the time, I knew little of Leonid Khrushchev, but what I did know, that Joseph Stalin had honored him with two medals for his bravery in battle, and that implied heroism, not treachery. All at once, I realized who this man was. Vyacheslav Molotov, Stalin's all-powerful foreign minister, a man once considered almost as ruthless and terrible as Stalin, the generalissimus himself. Perhaps because Molotov's name had inspired the infamous cocktail, that makeshift bomb, I had always imagined his voice to be gruff, sinister. Instead, it was surprisingly subdued, though beneath it I detected something sharp and ominous, like the gleaming, gleaming point of a dull blade. Don't worry, Molotov added. It's Yerunda. It's rubbish. Everyone knows Leonid died in a plane crash in 1943. If it was such a yerunda, I thought, why mention it at all? Growing up in the USSR, I didn't have to read George Orwell to know all about doublespeak. So that was the beginning of my journey. It was many, many years ago, many decades ago. And that's how I was introduced to uh, my birth grand grandfather, Nikita Khrushchev's son, Leonid Khrushchev. Um, and um, uh, it was mentioned that it was a detective investigation. It was indeed, because I grew up knowing that Khrushchev's son was always a hero. Uh, my birth grandfather was always a hero. But in fact, as it turned out, in recent years, more and more accounts has come out to um, um, assume, to convince the, the public that he was a traitor to the Nazis. He was a Benedict Arnold of the Russian state, of the Soviet state. Um, and the reason it's such an important story to me is that today we witness, when we look at Ukraine and we look at uh, the Russian propaganda, the Kremlin propaganda against the Kiev authorities, uh, we hear a lot of this uh, Nazi um, rhetoric, well, anti-Nazi rhetoric, that Kiev is just like the Nazis, apparently, as we were told recently by Vladimir Putin, the uh, siege of those cities in, uh, in East Ukraine are just like the siege of Leningrad uh, during World War II. So it's important to understand that once you mention a Nazi, for the Russians, it becomes an almost excuse for all criticism without even any research being done. And regrettably, that happened to my family. Of course, poor Leonid Khrushchev, who was 25 years old when he died, um, I rarely disclose my age, but it's important to say he's twice as young as I am now. So it's strange to talk about my grandfather in such a way, but he was 25 years old when he died. Um, he was a playboy, he was a womanizer, he was a James Dean of Soviet nomenclatura, and for that, because of the Soviet system, which always puts state above an individual, he paid dearly, and even more dearly uh, paid his father, Nikita Khrushchev, my birth great-grandfather, because suddenly in the contemporary story, the contemporary rhetoric of, of uh, Russia today, um, the reason Nikita Khrushchev, which I think the greatest thing that he has ever done, he denounced Stalinism first in 1956 during the secret speech, and uh, later on with his thought qualities, as imperfect as they were, uh, I immediately admit that. Um, he denounced that, but it's no longer seen as an act of, of, of an act of courageous politician who feels regret for the fact that he himself was a very trusted Stalin's lieutenant uh, until Stalin died in 1953. Uh, but instead, actually, it is dismissed as a simple act of uh, of political revenge, because if Leonid was a traitor to the Nazis, and then the story goes, because Russians love literature, and Russians are great in inventing stories. That's why Russians are so good at propaganda, because propaganda is inventing stories. Um, and uh, so as the story goes today, 
it's 